Welcome back. I've got another Palantir update today with Palantir around $15 per share, about flat on the day. I've got a bunch of Bloomberg stuff to run through, some other links here at the top. And basically, I want to run through the current state of Palantir, ownership institutionally from insiders and from retail investors, as well as some other news and such. I wanted to start off with the current analyst recommendations, which are that Palantir should be trading at a 12-month price target of around $22 per share. We have the stock at around $15, which represents a very green divergence here, which, of course, you'll see the analysts are rarely correct on a stock but that is the general target that they are expecting, a return potential of 46%. So could they be right? Yes. Could they be wrong? Yes. Ultimately, they are the ones making public recommendations on a stock. So we saw a new recommendation here by Wolf Research at $13 per share peer perform. And then just to recap, we've got 15, 24, 31, 25, 24, 25, and 40. Okay, moving along, just wanted to bring this to your attention. If you were interested in the average open market sell price, it's around $24 is what the insiders, I guess, is the average sell price. So I just thought that was interesting and wanted to share that. But on the ownership summary, and then this chart is also interesting, you can see here that these are the points at which the insiders either sold or I'm guessing these yellow markings are for options contracts, but that's pretty interesting. Okay, so here we are with the ownership summary. I wanted to look at the actual, where is it? We, we will look at, okay, here we go, individuals. So I wanted to look at the individual retail investors, how their number of shares held is actually tracking. And you'll see it is at pretty much an all-time low. If we go back, this is at the uh, almost the DPO right here at the beginning, and we'll see that there has never been less interest in Palantir from a retail standpoint. That's 2020. We're over here in 2021. According to this, this is just the individual percentage ownership. So I guess it's not necessarily interest, but the percentage ownership, there has never been less percent ownership. But if you overlay the investment advisor, we will be looking at how the investment advisors have just eaten up the retail interest in the stock now at a much higher point. So that's worth taking with a grain of salt, of course, because we have these other, however, Bloomberg splits it up for other institutional ways of keeping track of this. But I just want to show that divergence, retail percent ownership, and then institutional percent ownership pretty much coming out just like that. So I wanted to discuss why we've seen this downtrend, and it's really not because of company-specific news. It is, of course, macro. No doubt you can find more information on that if you want. But here is the news, really, and we haven't seen too much. A bunch of articles saying, is Palantir a bull and bear's clothing? Is there a short squeeze about to happen? Stuff like that. Really no company-specific news since we had that announcement on, and now it's glitching out on me, but I will just close it because there's not too much going on in terms of news. But I did want to bring this up, which is the estimates. These are the official analyst estimates for the year 2021 or I should say 2022 and 2023, but the estimate is for 2021 right here because we do not have the full year numbers. But I just wanted to talk about how we have about 1.5 billion in revenue for the year, have that increasing to one or almost, it should be about $2 billion right there if you round it up of revenue. So we're looking at a 33% increase in revenue year over year and then up to 2.6 billion in revenue in fiscal year 2023. So you may ask, are the analyst forecasting for profitability? And this is actually pretty interesting. So if we scroll down to net income gap, that would actually be the answer to that is no. The analysts are not forecasting for profitability. We saw a loss of a billion in 2020, and then we're approximately seeing a loss of 500 million. And then we are looking at a loss of 300 and 250 or so. So basically, the analysts are not expecting profitability in the next couple of years. Now, what does this mean? That means there is room for Palantir to surprise to the upside in terms of profitability and profitability of the business. It doesn't mean they have to get there. It means that this could be a turning point into the future 
when they actually turn profitable, potentially before the analysts are expecting them to. So now I just wanted to talk about this on Twitter. I was just looking at the institutional ownership as I was just showing you and saw Gerber Kawasaki, as we have talked about before with Ross Gerber as the investment manager. And here it is. So it looks like, just to make this official from my video previously on their whole deal with owning Palantir and then selling it, and then trashing the company. This is just what I'm seeing, just from a fact standpoint. It looks like they bought in Q1 of 2021 about 27 or 28,000 shares, and we're looking at a price of over $27 a share. And we saw the stock fall down to 23 or so, and they actually sold their entire position. So if you actually listen to Ross Gerver and what he says about taking losses, moving on quickly from stocks that you lose money in, it is pretty consistent with his thinking there that if Palantir stock fell more than 15%, he would take the loss and move on. That's his strategy. It seems like that's what he did here. Sure, I guess this information could be wrong, but it's coming from Bloomberg, so I don't know why it would be, but it's also particularly interesting how he ch he chooses to say the company has never or his fund has never owned Palantir when it appears they have and now they actually own 16 shares according to this again it could be completely wrong but I am showing 16 shares for 2022 Q1 so it appears Ross Gerber and Gerber Kawasaki GK has about 200 or 300 dollars or so in Palantir which is quite fascinating. Again, I'm not actually sure if this 16 figure is correct, but that's what it's showing. And then if we actually scroll down here, I found this, I was looking for activity, again, institutional activity, I sorted for puts and calls, and we have this all the way at the bottom, Gerber Kawasaki, we have a call from Gerber Kawasaki, apparently in their 13F for one contract. Again, I have no idea if this is right, just wanted to mention it, some weird stuff going on. And appears just one contract. I don't know. I don't know. It seems like it's wrong, to be honest, but I wanted to bring it up nonetheless. We have no news, as I was saying, from Palantir in their newsroom here. But if we do go on over to this, we saw that yesterday Palantir said they announced they're working or joining forces with Canadian technology company Think Data Works and Canada-based auto parts leader Martin Rea International to develop and launch a supply chain resiliency platform that will address the urgent supply chain crisis impacting manufacturers and customers worldwide. So this seems like another joint partnership in which Palantir is working on developing a solution, another platform. They say the resiliency platform will leverage the data foundation and Palantir Foundry application building tools to enable rapid prototyping and innovation to help the manufacturing industry solve challenges urgently as they arise. So once again, I will mention, it seems like Palantir is doing a lot, almost too much, and they keep announcing these partnerships when they are not actually contracts. So continuing to work on these different projects that don't seem like they will be benefiting the company in tangible ways. Now, sure, this could turn into a huge success, but we have yet to see a lot of new contracts, contracts specifically, not just partnerships, not just strategic partnerships, but contracts more so in the recent term. So I just wanted to mention that as well. So here we have a article from it's Seeking Alpha. I closed the other two because I think this one is actually the best. I'll we'll just look at it very briefly. Palantir is down double digits this year, just coming into the year in the first couple weeks. And we don't really see any good reason or justification for the sell-off in fundamental terms for Palantir, the company. So basically what it comes down to is this quarterly re report, which will be happening in early February, maybe mid-February, which we will really be looking for commercial revenue growth. And this author mentions accelerating product launches as potentially a driver for that growth. I wouldn't actually expect any of these new launches, such as Foundry for Crypto, to have any effect financially or even in the growth for the company as these are really just pilot programs in my eyes for the potential of what these projects could be. We've heard really nothing on any partnerships there, contracts or any of the like. So I would not, in contradiction to this author, be expecting any of those, but would like to be proven wrong on that, of course. 
So then we have another mention here of not being overvalued on expected free cash flow. Again, it's really about the company Palantir proving itself over these quarters, proving itself fundamentally and why it deserves to be valued the way it is. The forgotten SPAC business, here's a mention of this. I really think this part of the story for Palantir is more of Wall Street trying to protect against the risks of Palantir SPACs going sideways or worse, going to zero, potentially in the worst case scenario. So this is really a negative for how the company is viewed, and that's because they are seen as buying revenue when that is not entirely the case. It might be very slightly, but not entirely once again. So the sooner Palantir can actually prove the importance of this and how they're actually benefiting from it. I don't think this will be in the short term, but I do think as time progresses, uh, more analysts will become comfortable with the idea of having SPACs on the balance sheet, perhaps, and more so just investments for the long run where the company is not reliant upon these investments for success, but more so just a place for them to grow in these highly leveraged positions, leveraged meaning they are leveraged because the company's software is actually powering these companies. So it's essentially a leveraged bet that their software, their business is so important that it can actually power these other companies and drive them to success. So I think that will become more understood over time. So this is actually a pretty good article if you want to read it on the myth of overvaluation. The market is trying to figure out the current environment with all sorts of things, but I think Palantir has yet to find its correct valuation. We saw it fly very high in its early days of trade, early weeks of trading, and has now been coming down. I just wanted to mention that we've seen Palantir's revenue multiple fall below 20 times sales, which is significantly lower than it was before, above $40 now, or times, 40 times revenue. Now it is under 20 times revenue. And that is with the company growing at 35%. So take that as you will. Trailing 12-month revenue looking to be closer to $2 billion this year. And lastly, just wanted to touch on, we have ARK Invest. Weight of Palantir is about 2%, ranking 16 this is the most up-to-date figure here uh, with the company sitting at around $30 billion, slightly under. Cost average is between $21 and $25 a share. We saw their market value since the very peak. It was almost up to $1 billion. Now has been essentially cut in half down to $500 million, And that is the update with ARK Invest. So there you have it. I refreshed this to get the up-to-date market price. Palantir sitting at $14.97 at a $28 billion market cap as of January 2022. I'm eagerly awaiting Palantir's earnings report to see what can happen next for the company in terms of the stock. Will we get some support? Will we see a rally as a result of strong fundamentals, a beat to the upside? One thing you will, of course, realize is that, let's see if we can get a graph up here, is that for Palantir to go from 15 up to 30 is actually a 100% gain. Now, of course, it's hard to do a 100% gain. Let's say the market realizes, oh, you know what? Palantir should actually be worth what it was trading at before previously, potentially up to $30. That is a 100% increase. Now, again, very hard to do, but if you look back just a couple months ago, Palantir was literally at 28 right here before the earnings report, did the conference call didn't go so well and sort of lost momentum there, broke some technical resi uh, technical support, and which was uh, essentially about here, falling much farther. So it's worth noting that if Palantir is able to reach and retrace $20, $25, $30, those are enormous gains from today. So, But it remains to be seen how Palantir will be seen as a stock in the quarters going forward if this is more of a long-term multiple compression or if Palantir will start to bounce back and return on fundamentals and once again as i will tell you key events really the earnings is what drives the stock we saw the earnings there we saw the earnings around here i think and the earnings there or potentially it, actually no it wasn't there it was here so earnings really drives the stock if palantir delivers a great earnings report the stock will follow so that's where i'll leave it palantir sitting around 15 dollars, significantly lower down enormously year to date if we can get a year-to-date figure here, I don't know where it's actually reading here, but we opened the year at around 
mid-18s, I believe, 18.53 or so, now down $3, more than $3 actually, $3.50, down all the way below $15. It is pretty crazy to see. That'll do it for this video. We'll have to see what Palantir is able to do for the rest of this quarter. I'm expecting an annual demo day at some point this quarter. Haven't heard anything about it yet, but you will recall last demo day was last year in January of 2021. So hopefully that can happen again. Probably not January at this point, but hopefully February as they did mention it would be an annual ordeal. So that's where I'll leave it for this video. I'll catch you in the next one.